Hello and welcome to Fans OCC episode 2, uh, where I take a artist's work from online that I'm inspired by and recreate it using my own techniques. Today's concept is coming from an artist by the name of Bobby Repose. Uh, his artwork stood out to me uh, in Instagram, ArtStation and YouTube. Uh, he's a very dedicated concept artist and comes out with some really cool creature designs, which uh, I, I, I admire a lot. You can check out his social media links in the description box below. I highly recommend that you go and take a look at it to get some insight into 2D concept work and creature design. I would also like to take this moment to thank Bobby Repoles for allowing me to use his concept in this video. And finally, if you enjoy this type of content, then please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I am currently trying to hit that 100k mark and all help is really appreciated. And with that said, let's jump straight into ZBrush. So inside of ZBrush, we're going to start off with the head plane. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to use the move brush, play build up and damn standard brush to block in some of the bigger forms for, for this uh, bust. Uh, the concept we're using today is coming from a Mr. Bobby Repoles. Uh, I hope I've said the name right. Um, he's a concept artist from the US and he really inspires me with his work uh, with pencil and paper and uh, I hope someday to learn how to do that myself but uh, this this particular concept stood out to me a lot because of the intricate detail in the wrinkles on the face and the the stern look to this on the side profile so uh, at the stage I'm still working with the very basic block out, uh, not doing any detail or as, any detail uh, as much as possible because uh, that comes a lot later. Uh, the only details I put in are more like reference points for the character so that I can come back to it later and adjust them uh, later. Uh, it's essential to get some good block out stages going before you commit to detailing your character. And uh, for this one, it took me quite a while to get the silhouette right, but uh, I eventually did get the, the, the look I was going for uh, with this with this model. And um, so right now I'm just blocking in some of the bigger shapes of the muscles and some of the bone structure of the head uh, and the face. And then moving on to filling out the neck area. I'm not going to worry too much about doing any of the body stuff because it's going to be predominantly about the the side of the head or the profile of the head uh, and bust so it don't have to worry too much about the rest of the model. Now I'm just going in with the clay buildup and refining some of those features like the ear, chin, uh, now moving into adding some eyes and with that the uh, eyes placed I'll then duplicate the eyes and then sculpt on top to create some eyelids. I find that's a very quick way to create eyelids. A lot of people would normally sculpt the eyelids from the head model, but I find that if you keep things separate, then you can refine them as much as possible without having to worry about topology or uh, losing uh, topology. So that's a, another good key method. Uh, try to keep as many things separate as possible so that you can always sculpt to your heart's content on one piece and then when it comes time to actually combining it you'll have a much round much better uh, basis to work on so in a minute i'm going to actually pull the neck out from behind so that it doesn't look too thin and i'm trying to give it some extra bulk uh, it's a bit difficult to sort of judge the the width of the character because we're seeing it from the side in the concept but that's where your artistic sort of licensing comes into being or uh or yeah your artistic licensing comes in where you have to make the the decision on how the uh, creature is going to look just then i added a sphere or a cylinder for the horn and that's just for a rough guide at the moment uh, just blocking in still, very much a block in stage. 
add in a little bit of detail here and there with the dam standard and the clay buildup, but uh, you'd want to keep it as loose as possible um, at this stage because uh, the detailing stage will come a lot further down the line. And uh, we're using dam stand, uh, sorry, DynaMesh at the moment as well. So we're not too worried about correct topology or anything like that. That's a, another method I like to use is to stay inside a DynaMesh as long as possible when doing these concepts so that I don't have to uh, worry about topology and I can be free to sculpt uh, anything I like without having to make sure that everything is clean and correct because I think that's where a lot of uh, problems come in is when you're trying to make something perfect at the stage when it should be more about a exploration of your creature so uh, in order to do that you don't want to be stuck with topology uh, like clean topology and edge flow you want to be able to just get in there and start sculpting uh, right now I'm just adding some teeth to the creature by using a cylinder and then just pinching the ends so that it creates a sharp point and the same thing for the little spikes on his chin underneath as well so those were created the same way as the teeth, the horns, and uh, the other horns that are on top of his head. Now I'm just going ahead and trying to make some interesting shapes with the, with the chin area. And then what I'll do is I'll just mirror that over to the other side. Um, because it's a concept, it doesn't have to be uh, asymmetrical. And because we're going to be seeing it from one side, so we don't have to worry too much about asymmetry either. And uh, now I'll be going around those horn areas and just making sure that they sit with the model and touching up areas for with more detail as well. I'm still using the dam standard, the clay buildup, and sometimes the smooth brush. I don't like to use the smooth brush too much because it can take away some of the details that you might have put there accidentally. And uh, so I try to use the smooth brush very sparingly. Adding some detail to the horns, trying to make them so they're inset in the skull. And looking at the, the top of the head for that sort of wet. And moving some things around. Always trying, always looking at your concept and always looking at where you can improve your design. Uh, this is much easier to do when you do have a concept, of course, and uh, you can you can actually refer back to, but if you had no concept and you were doing it from your imagination or from reference, uh, a creature, then it's a little bit more difficult to get things right. But when you have a, a really good concept like this one, it's very difficult to go wrong because you, you have a blueprint right in front of you uh, to, to look at. So now I'm just going in with the dam standard and adding some I I can't I like uh, wrinkles that are the bigger wrinkles. So those bigger wrinkles that are more defined, uh, you go in with the dam standard and you can just cut them in really quickly. I'm still very loose, working very loose with the dam standard. I'm not trying to get the perfect wrinkle or anything. I'm just trying to find some interesting uh, lines and flow. Going forward with the horns on the chin or the, the spikes on the chin. Uh, I'm just going to start to use the trim dynamic or trim, uh, yeah, the trim dynamic to create those horns uh, to make them a little bit more sharper and not so smooth. Or the trim adaptive as well. And once I've done all the trim adaptive and and sort of sculpting on the horns, I just sit them inside the skin and uh, make sure that they look like they're coming through the skin uh, on, the, on the chin. And then I'll move on to the bigger horn on the top, use the same method with the trim adaptive and trim dynamic uh, to create that horn look. And I'm just gonna move it and keep rotating it to make sure it's in the right place. And then finally, with the other horns on the top, just do the same method uh, as I did with the, the, the bigger horn, basically. 
And now we're finally coming into uh, the more detailed stage. So uh, at this stage, I have Dynamesh, uh, sorry, I have Z remeshed it and I have started to add more detail uh, into the sculpt itself. I'm really getting into the finer detailing stage now, uh, adding some landmark wrinkles, getting some of that fat into the skin with the standard brush. So it looks like it's a heavy, heavier skin on the on the face, and uh, just all a general sort of pass with the finer details, uh, adding more wrinkle lines. Uh, constantly looking at the concept as well for any landmark features that I have missed out. Uh, just using the trim. Uh, just using the damn standard, sorry, uh, to get some of those wrinkles in there. And this is all big, uh, a concept piece, so I'm not looking to be perfect with it. I'm just looking to uh, get a good image. Uh, this is kind of the way you would do it for a uh, film or TV concept. If you were to try and sell it to the director or art, art lead, uh, you would show sort of Try and get something down as fast as possible, get it through Photoshop and uh, present it to your client. So these are the kind of techniques that you would use for that. Uh, for that. And uh, now I'm just going ahead with some alphas and adding some alphas to it. It just breaks up the skin and it gives more detail to the skin. And once the alphas are all placed, I'll then go in with the damn standard again and just pick out a couple of those wrinkles that are a bit more defined. Uh, it also gives some more depth to those wrinkles as well and makes it look a bit more interesting. Now, you could do take your time with this model or this sort of style and get all those wrinkles to, to be really, really good and, and to make your character look really cool. But um, as I mentioned before, uh, you just want to get this out as fast as possible if it's for a concept. Uh, you can do the majority of the work inside of Photoshop uh, afterwards. And I'm just going around now, adding the finer, final pieces, final touches to the uh, concept before moving on to polypaint, where I start to use uh, ZBrush's painting system to give it some color. A little bit difficult with this one because it didn't actually have color on the concept, so I'm kind of eyeballing it and, and um, using my own interpretation of what I think would suit this character and um, so I just started off with some dark browns, dark patches where the dark patches would be in the eye, eye area, on the chin and then adding more and more colour to it as I went along and to break up some of those key some of those areas so the key areas for the darker parts would be on the back and on the top of the head and then uh, around the eyes and, and whatnot. And then you can you can add some fleshier colors around the ears and those softer areas around the nose. And just adding more and more color to it uh, uh, gradually. Uh, using masks as well to mask out areas like the wrinkles. And then using a brush, paintbrush, uh, to paint in some of those drier areas with the, the masks added. And then using some extra masks techniques to try and break up the skin texture and give it a bit more of an interesting look. And then move on to the posing of our character using the Transpose Master Tools, uh, which are in the Z plugin uh, tools section. Uh, this just helps to give it a bit more of an interesting look rather than just looking off into the distance. I rotated the head slightly to towards the camera so that it's just off center and not, and that also helps to break the symmetry up as well. So here you can see here, masking off the head and then rotating it slightly to the left and up. And it just gives that a little bit more of an interesting look. Next, we'll come down to the uh, rendering and for this, I'm just going to render using ZBrush. Uh, I 
gone over this a few times in some other tutorials that I have, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm rendering out different mat caps, different materials, lightings, uh, and light passes and other passes to take into Photoshop in order to create the concept later. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. And now when we return, we will get into Photoshop and we can see how the image comes together. Hey guys, if you're interested in learning how to sculpt and composite characters, then visit my online stores for in-depth tutorials, models, brushes, and more. Just follow the links in the description box below. Also, if you enjoy this content, then please like, share, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Now, let's get back to the video. So inside of Photoshop, I've added all the material, passes, light passes uh, from ZBrush, and I'm just going through each one now, and trying to make it work with the image that I want to create. Now, you don't have to use all of the images that you render out of ZBrush. Now, I don't normally use all of them. I like to render out enough so that I have something to work with, basically. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. You just, you're trying to use those renders to create a concept image. Um, a lot of people, will kind of struggle with this part of the, of, the, of the concept because sometimes they don't have a very good base sculpt to work with. And the more you sculpt and the more detail you'll get when you come to the Photoshop part because you'll see the detail. So don't try and rush the ZBrush stage uh, before getting here. Try to do as much as you can inside the ZBrush before you uh, take it into Photoshop. Uh, and right now I am just going along and taking out the background, giving it a bit of a background, some atmospherics or clouds and lighting, just so it uh, lets the image sit in an environment. And then after that, I will go in with brushes to uh, enhance the image. And then using some textures, I will then texture the uh, from online, sorry, uh, some tileable textures from online. I'll then take those and put place them on top of the character and try to get more detail into the into the final image, basically. You can see I'm still using some of those uh, materials from earlier and trying to figure out if I can use some that I missed out. Uh, just added some subsurface scattering, some simple subsurface scattering. It's It's all fake, but it's it works for uh, this sort of image I'm using different lights, uh, light passes to get some reflections. Uh, here you can see I'm using the textures that I mentioned before from online. It's just to help add that extra bit of detail. And then masking out and just adding it where it needs to be. It doesn't have to be everywhere, but just in key areas, basically. Uh, same thing for this. I wanted to have it a bit more on the back of the neck and stuff, like a, like a sort of hard, like a harder skin, and it really helped with the with image, getting some textures on there. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I have, like I mentioned before, got tutorials on how to do this, more in-depth tutorials. And uh, you can check them out on my ArtStation, Flip Normals, and Gumroad websites. Um, I just want to thank uh, Bobby Rayball for letting me use his concept. And you can follow the links below to his other socials where you can you can find more of his work. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel, which is very useful for people who want to do concept work uh, with pencil and paper. He goes into very good detail on how to create concepts for uh, creature design uh, I, I highly recommend that you go and have a look at look at his work and um, so I'm going to leave that there for now and uh, which is coming up to the end of the, the concept now just adding some adjustment layers 
here and there and playing around with it until I get a good looking final product. And uh, I'm going to leave it there for now. This has been episode two of my fans OCC. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want, you can leave a comment below or a question below, and I will actually add that into the next episode, episode three in the future. So thank you for watching and um, stay safe. <laughs>